grace to you and peace from God our Father and His Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So I have a confession to make today. Sometimes when I meet new people, especially people around my own age that I meet not through the church, I oftentimes don't tell them what I do for a living. Not because I don't love all of you, and not because I don't love the work or the calls of ministry, but because I know that when I say I'm a pastor, a whole lot of assumptions are going to get made. There will be assumptions about how I talk, the kind of language I want to hear, the stories that I may or may not find amusing, the political perspective that I must have, the opinions that I have on social topics, and the list goes on and on. And I've discovered that often those assumptions are not at all who I am. And so to start with those assumptions and then have to teach people that's not who I am to get them to figure out who I really am, that's just a whole lot of work that sometimes I just prefer to skip. People don't recognize me for me when I label myself as pastor or even as Christian sometimes. We see the same kind of thing going on in our gospel reading today. The people don't recognize Jesus as the Messiah. Their image of what the Messiah looks like is different from who Jesus is. See, the people have grown up in a culture and an understanding where they knew God would send the Messiah. And when the Messiah, the chosen one of God, arrived, their expectation was he would be and he would be such a wonderful king that he would overthrow the Roman government and he would rule the kingdom. And he would lead the people of Israel back to the way things used to be. And he would raise the Jewish nation into a position of power in the Middle East like it held during the reign of King David. The Messiah was going to be a political leader and a ruler. Jesus was not those things. The people were waiting for someone who would take their fear and their anger and turn it into military action. And Jesus was the opposite of that. Jesus didn't want to overthrow the government. He was poor. He was a teacher. He spent his time with people that no normal leader or anyone with any kind of standing would have spent their time with. He was with the lost and the sick and the poor and the outcasts. Jesus taught about God and a faith that was bigger than the people had ever imagined possible. That God was meant for all people, not just the Jewish people. And God was willing to do so much more than they ever expected. And so the people come to Jesus and they ask him, are you the Messiah? Are you who we're waiting for? Or is there somebody else? Because you don't really look like the Messiah, the Messiah we were hoping for. culture today where Christians sometimes get a bad reputation. Where when you say, I'm a Christian or I go to church, you may face some of the same kind of confusion that Jesus faced. Because the popular image of what a Christian is and what a Christian looks like today is so twisted sometimes, so different from what Jesus taught as though society doesn't recognize what a Christian looks like. If you ask someone without a church background what Christians look like 
or even someone who's been a part of a church in the past and has walked away from it, you're liable to hear things like, Christians are hypocrites, unbending, closed off, judgmental, exclusive. And the list goes on. Maybe you've had that kind of an experience where you, what you mean when you say, I'm a Christian, is nothing like what people assume. Because of that, sometimes we get a little confused too, and we start wondering, are we supposed to be more like that? Expect expectation? A little uncertain about where is Jesus' voice in the midst of so many other opinions and choices? When the people come to talk to Jesus and ask if he's the Messiah, Jesus says, I've already been pretty clear about this. You're just not listening. And then he says, my sheep hear my voice, and they follow me. The thing we need to understand about this idea of sheep listening to their shepherd's voice is that in Jesus' day, a shepherd would walk in front of his sheep, and he would talk to them, he would call them, and they would hear his voice and would follow him wherever he they weren't herded, they were called. And although sheep are not particularly intelligent animals, they knew the sound of their caregiver. They knew he meant safe pasture. They knew he meant water. They knew he meant safety from danger. Sheep would not follow the wrong. The voice sounds different to them. It makes no sense. It has no meaning for them if it's the wrong shepherd. Only the sound of their shepherd would get them moving. It would take them good places. It would mean safety. It would mean home and enough. Only their shepherd cared about them. Only their shepherd loved them. His voice. There are so many voices in our lives that try to drown out the voice of Jesus. Voices that call out to our fear. This political season in particular, we've heard our fair share of that. Fear that America is not what it once was. Fear of terrorism, not only abroad, but here at home fear that our jobs are being taken, our money is not safe, and so many other fears that we hear all the time. So there are voices that call out to our fear. There are voices that call out to our ego and our sense of pride and our individualism, saying that we don't need somebody else to survive. We're okay on our own. Pushing us to make decisions without considering how they might affect others, calling us to stop caring about other people, especially those we don't really like anyway. And there are voices that call to our demand for instant gratification, driving us deeper into debt, deeper into greed, deeper into hope. of the voices buffets us from every direction. And we strain to hear Jesus' voice calling us amidst all that noise. It's so easy to hear the wrong voice and follow it for a while. Jesus says, my sheep today that Jesus' voice is the voice of a good shepherd. One who watches over his sheep without pause. One who searches out safe pastures and quiet waters. One who cares for us and loves us. That is the voice of the good shepherd. That is what we listen for. A 
amidst the chaos. And it's a voice that Jesus promises will call to us all the time so that we can hear it and recognize it, so that it stands out, so that it's calling us when we stop to listen for it. And even when we don't work that hard to hear. Because I've decided, I think, that sheep don't actually make a conscious effort to follow their shepherd. They don't recognize, say like, oh, I hear this voice and he's my shepherd and I'm going to follow. I think it's more of a learned response for them. A conditioning of sorts. A recognition that this sound means good things for them. A pull that they can't ignore. Jesus' voice is a voice that draws us to him. No matter where we have wandered as his sheep, and it leads us to follow in Jesus' way, following in the footsteps of his life, which is not always an easy or unburdened journey. Because to follow in Jesus' footsteps, to follow his voice, is to take a path that invites us to give up our fear in order to love like our shepherd loves. It means following a path where we reach out to those who have offended us, offering a hand to those that scare us, and sacrificing for those who don't deserve it. It's a path that calls us to let go of our pride and our ego and be humble. And it's a path that strips us of our need for more than necessary. The shepherd calls us to learn to love. It may not go quite the way we expect it to go. Do you remember that crowd in Revelation? All those people that we hear have come through the great persecution. They are people who have heard the voice of their shepherd calling. They have loved their enemies and prayed for their persecutors. They have turned the other cheek and let go of their fear of death. All because of the shepherd's call in their life. All because of that shepherd's voice leading them into new ways of being and new places. And we may wonder, how can that be green pastures and quiet waters? How can persecution or death have anything to do with that? And yet, the crowd stands there cheering at the foot of the throne. Their final destination is to stand in the presence of their shepherd in a place where there are no more tears and no more pain. Perhaps it's not the way they expected their journey to go, but their good shepherd called them, drawing them to him by the sound of, their, of his voice, leading them through a love that was so complete, it meant their lives. It meant ridicule and sorrow and confusion, but the shepherd's voice led them and brought them to a safe place. We too are sheep, listening to the voice of our shepherd, drawn to that voice, following where he leads down paths that we may not recognize and into situations we may not be able to see our way through. Follow because our shepherd's voice calls us on. We know that it is a voice that is filled with love for us and that it is a voice that leads us to love and to safety and to 